welcome to this webinar. Good afternoon. We have muted everyone's mic, so you will not be able to speak, but I hope you can all hear me. If you can hear me, please just send a comment, hello, hi, on the chat. Thank you, you can all hear me. So my name is Efosa Ajobo. I work with Lagos Business School. Today's webinar is on scenario planning and it's specific to this COVID-19 era that we are in, so the COVID-19. And Nigeria is not an exception. The world will no longer be the same. So what would this new world look like? While it is impossible to predict, we can develop different scenarios that help us to plan a right. Now, in this webinar, you will understand the need to develop the right skills and competence to design scenarios for long-term strategic planning in a volatile, uncertain, and complex environment as we find ourselves. Our lead facilitator today is Professor Chris Obeche. Professor Obeche has been with Lagos Business School for decades. He teaches strategy, sustainability, and corporate governance at Lagos Business School, as well as Strathmore Business School in Kenya. He is the founding director of the school's sustainability center. His research are in strategy in turbulent environments, as we find ourselves right now, strategic leadership, board effectiveness, and corporate sustainability. Professor Obeche has been involved in several businesses in Nigeria. He was the chairman and board of director of Diamond Bank PLC. He is on the board of several private and public companies, including the Red Star Express, PLC, FedEx, National Source Company of Nigeria, NASCON, Health Partners, and Palton Morgan Holdings. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. And we know that we're going to have a very, very interesting webinar. Now, our basic ground rules are this. Please, while the webinar is going on, post all your questions in the Q&A section. You will see the bar at the bottom of your screen. You see a Q&A section. Kindly click it and click on Ask Question. So put in your questions there. At the end of the session, we will take your questions. Thank you so much. Sir Chris? Thank you, Fosa. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this webinar, which is happening after lunch. I hope you had good lunch. And uh, if the lunch is heavy, you better stand up so that you don't fall asleep during the webinar. And I also hope you are keeping safe and well and taking good care of yourselves. Let me correct one thing. First side, we are not going to make them experts this uh, 40 minutes or one hour webinar, but more like a teaser. We are, we're going to have a full seminar on it in about four weeks' time. But so I just want to share my thoughts on this subject matter and see if I can interest you to also think of developing scenarios for your own organization. So what is the ASO scenario planning? It's a long range planning technique that tries to broadly identify different possible worlds or futures. Could be one in one, five, even 10 years from now. As a matter of fact, I know of a company that did one for 50 years. And said that must be crazy. But no, people are always trying to think ahead. It entails you to construct or imagine a few different, different but possible futures or scenarios. And we try to predict a range of possible developments in each of those futures. Don't forget, we say we are trying to imagine what the future looks like. Nobody can see the future, even Nostradamus tried, but the whole idea is that we want to be prepared because the fortune favors the prepared mind. Scenario plan was first popularized in the, in the 1970s. So it's just something that is not that old. When Royal Dutch Shell used it to deal most successfully than his competitors. With the oil price shock engineered by OPEC, 
those who were not born before then can Google it. In the 1970s, the first time we picked out that orange shock, Shell was the only one who was able to predict it and took advantage of it. Actually, scenarios deal with two worlds, the world of facts and the world of perception. And scenarios of the future tend to offer us stretch zones, stretch zones for imagination. It makes us to think, imagine things. And the things you think might not happen could actually happen. But scenarios will help serve two main purposes. Most people tend to look at scenarios as a way of, oh, how can I protect myself? How can I take care of risk? So the first is protective, anticipating understanding risk. But the second, which many people don't actually try to take advantage of, is entrepreneurial. It could help me to discover opportunities, help me to discover strategic options, which we have never been previously aware of. If you, in, 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 in before 9-11, if you have told most Americans that the Wall Street Center building, that someday somebody's going to collapse it, they'll laugh at you, say it's not possible. But you know what? A company that had an office in Wall Street Center developed a scenario, developed scenarios. And one of the scenarios was the Wall Street Center building crashing. And that forced them to think of business continuity. At that time, they used to have their backup within the building. So enough, even within another backup within New York, it forced them to now move a set of backup to the West Coast. So if you think that you cannot imagine certain things, then you might be joking. What are those kinds of scenario, scenario planning? Based on, basically, we are trying to sketch out different possible worlds of future. The message is possible. We didn't say exact. Second kind of story is that instead of predicting one future, you imagine several different futures. So the whole idea of scenario plan is that you have different scenarios, not just one, because you cannot be certain. I know that many of us in trying to develop scenarios tend to say, oh, worst case, best case. We'll come to that later. Okay. When you not try to predict one, several futures, you'll be forced to look at issues like identifying drivers of change. What are those drivers of change in our environment that could have impacts in the future? A simple example, any of us remember Nokia was a leading, leading handset manufacturer, number one in the world. But there was some driver of change that Nokia was not looking at. And that was the need to connect, the need for people to connect. And connecting went beyond just listening to people, it went beyond voice. And that's why they lost out when smartphone became the vogue, because one driver of change was the need to connect. You then imagine possible directions this might lead, that each of these drivers, what could it lead to in the different futures we are trying to predict? You then examine your own current plan day in light of these possible futures. What we're doing today, can we be successful if scenario one plays out? Can we be successful if scenario two plays out? Or scenario three or scenario four? So it now forces us to realize that we can be very vulnerable if we are not looking at what these scenarios could be. Let me just start, let's start by saying, how do we actually go ahead with developing scenarios? I'm going to through three, six steps of developing scenarios. And then we'll look at some scenarios that some, some of us have tried to play with around COVID-19 era. The first step is to define the focus and boundaries of the scenario efforts by agreeing on the issues or decision to be addressed. What issue are we trying to address? 
what is the planning or decision issue we are trying to address? Is it the impact of coronavirus pandemic on the Nigerian economy? What possible future developments need to be probed? What could impact this in the future? New technology? New medical research? New communities? Unrest? Resource requirements? How far in the future do we need to look at? Six months? One year? Two years? Five years? Even 10 years? So you decide the time frame. So I'll give an example of focal issue. I said, what would be the effect of COVID rampage on the Nigerian economy in the next two years? So we'll define the time frame. But you as a company can also have a specific issue. How should my company manage the impact? So you see, it's not sufficient to develop scenarios. But the question is, what will that lead to? What kind of decisions should we be taking? What kind of resources must we have in place if we are going to succeed in the future? Step two is to identify key forces in the environment. So we identify and list key forces that will influence the success or failure of a focal issue or decision. Facts, for example, about manpower, technology. So we have the necessary resources. We have the technology to compete. Are we focusing on the right customers? Are we in the right market? Are we going to have issues with supply chain? Are our products adequate? What kind of competition are we going to face it? We probably know the ones we have now, but you ones may emerge. So what, uh, what, we, what we these decision makers in the organization want to know when making key choices? So what will we as a company see as success or failure? That's for us to know. Step three, for us to identify what I call key driving forces in the macro environment. Again, we have to identify at least these key driving forces that will influence the key factors identified in step two. It's usually helpful to organize our thoughts around the so-called pastel factors, political, economic, social, environmental, legal. It helps us, again, to have it in a structured way. At this stage, it requires some intensive research. It could be desk research. It could be field research, data gathering. And sometimes it could even be brainstorming bringing some executives together, unless based on our experience and the way we operate in the marketplace to now brainstorm and come up with these driving forces that can have impact on the microenvironments. Some are examples of driving forces. On political side, government's ability to establish order when things get out of hand or feel over overwhelmed by any chaotic situation or even government manipulation of interest groups to see how they can change the agenda. Economic driving forces could be a growth of the economy, government expenditure, consumer purchasing power, exchange rates, unemployment rates, price of oil, some social driving forces could be security problems, social problems, population growth. Technology, some of the driving forces, these are not exhaustive, just give you examples. Collapse of power grid, telecommunication internet disruptions, digitalization, written, artificial intelligence, environmental issues, could be waste disposal issues, industrial and domestic pollution issues, 
on the legal. Why did us? We have a bankruptcy law. It could be a driving force in terms of how to manage bankruptcy. You see, these driving forces, having listed them, we can now bring them into two categories. First category we call predetermined elements. These are forces that are more or less predetermined, inevitable forces that will signal with signals in the present or immediate past that will still play out in the future that we're choosing. And predetermined elements are more likely to be seen in two areas, demographic, technology. The other category, which is the, actually the, the, the critical ones, the critical uncertainties, these are the unpredictable forces or uncertainties that are key to our focal issues. And we look more at these critical uncertainties because they're the ones that actually help us to create our scenarios. Step four, we need to now rank these critical uncertainties. And we rank them in, in order of importance and uncertainty. You see, this is where the brainstorming comes in. To throw up this, how is important here? Is it important? Very important? Not important? Certain? Highly uncertain? So we identify, we will now, from this ranking, identify two factors or trends that are most important and most uncertain. Because this is something you can't even have a handle on or have clear cut imagination. So highly uncertain, but most important. What we then do with this highly uncertain and most important is to create a matrix of uncertainty. So we construct two orthogonal axes that horizontal and vertical axis in order to define a me me a four, four matrices. So we have two axes crossing using the most important and most uncertain factors. It doesn't matter how you place them. The most important could be on horizontal, the most uncertain vertical. This is not mathematics. So please don't feel that we are now talking of uh, mathematical terminology. The metrics will allow us to define four very different but plausible quadrants of uncertainty. Each of these four corners is in essence a logical future that can be explored. So now I have four quadrants that are logical futures we can explore. So in each of these, in each of these quadrants, it's not easy for us to now imagine what the future will be there. I want to share three examples with you around this COVID. 19. Two factors, very important, highly uncertain, that's been used by one of my colleagues in developing this particular four quadrants are the spread of COVID 19. Is the spread widespread or limited. So the spread is high uncertain. The second use is the duration. Is it gonna be short or long? Because even though they are uncertain, they are important to us in terms of our future. So the first quadrant shows you where the spread is limited, the duration is short. By short, we define it as three months. So within three months, we'll be able to sort ourselves out. 
So if we look at all those trends and factors, say that are important to us, say how do they play out? So in this quadrant, does that mean that if the spread is limited, the duration is short, the chances are that, that we have quick oil price rebound. We have a lower GDP growth, but still a growth. We have moderate and manageable, manageable devaluation of the Naira. Because exchange rate is a factor we looked at. Moderate, higher inflation. Quick recovery and emergence of new businesses. Minimal increase of unemployment, insecurity, and poverty. Limited impact on consumer purchasing power. Minimal increase in population growth. This, to me, of all the four scenarios you could regard as the most optimistic, the least or the most pessimistic happens to be quadrant four, where the spread is wide and the duration is long. What do we see this happening in this particular future? Long oil price slump intense and prolonged recession, contraction of the economy, high exchange rates, high inflation, intense and high unemployment, insecurity and poverty, prolonged lower consumer purchasing power with increasing po poverty, unusual high population growth. So you see two different worlds, two different futures, but the challenge is, if any of this future is, if any of this scenario is to play out, how will I compete? What will happen to my business? How will my organization survive and thrive? Let me move to the next scenario that uses two different factors that are seen to be most important and most uncertain. Again, one of them is the duration of COVID-19. The second is oil price. The oil price is important and highly uncertain. So again, you have four different pictures. One scenario, looks at long duration of COVID-19 that goes upwards of six months, high oil price. Another looks at high oil price, low duration of COVID-19. Third scenario looks at short duration and low oil price. The first scenario looks at long duration and low oil price. In this last scenario, which happens to be most pessimistic, here again you talk about if this happens, we're going to have deep recession, unstable high exchange rates, high inflation, high unemployment and poverty, low consumer purchasing power, high social unrest, gangs, towns, mobs roam the streets for food. Forex rationing and import restriction, delayed business recovery, higher population growth, because people are locked up in their house and the chances are that they start making babies, banking crisis, very low capital inflow from abroad, government institutions and corporations could be disoriented. Again, this is the way this scenario plays out. The question again is, how do we play in each of these? Don't forget that two different groups identify two different factors that are most important and most uncertain. Let me take a third example for you. The third example looks at, again, duration of COVID as one factor that is and uncertain, 
and the other is social instability. Again, you start, if the duration is low and inst social instability is low, what's gonna happen in that future? If the duration is short and social instability is still high, what will happen in that future? If the duration is long and social instability is high, what will happen to that future? If social instability is low and duration is still long, what will happen? So you see, I am not, I'm challenging you to even think of. You might even have, you might disagree with some of the issues raised, but that's the beauty of scenario planning, that you as a group of executives in your organization have to agree on some of these factors. See, these factors, how do they play out? And how are we going to compete? If we are faced with high recession, high exchange rate, high inflation, high unemployment and poverty, low consumer purchasing power, forex rationing and import restriction, delayed business recovery, what will happen to us? Now we start asking questions for like, is my is my organization dependent on imported materials? So I already have this advantage. If I'm going to survive, what should be my action plan? Is my, is my business dependent on consumers that are highly challenged because low purchasing power? What will happen? They now become more price conscious because they don't have the money to spend they are start talking of affordability. So these are questions we are not forced to. Don't forget the specific issue for me is how will my company play? But the beauty of it is that since we don't know which of these scenarios we will play out, I say step six, we now select, we try to identify a few leading indicators to monitor in an ongoing way. So we have four scenarios. We start monitoring what's gonna happen, what, is, what are those factors that indicate us that could lead us to any of those four scenarios. It's important that we have this list, these indicators, because it's also important that we should not be gravitating towards the likely or the most likely scenario that's going to play out in our future. We keep track and monitor closely. So I'll see the early warning signs that a particular scenario is beginning to unfold. But the challenge is, have four plans. There might be at top line level, not granular, but you must have four, four, four plans that can play out in any of those scenarios. Because sometimes the leading indicators for a given scenario are obvious, but often they are subtle. That means we have to have our eyes open, we have to have that intimacy with the marketplace, with our customers. We have to listen to experts. Many experts are out there telling us what's going on, what's going to happen to the economy, what's going to happen to air price, what's going to happen to uh, duration of COVID-19. Sometimes even the legislation could be an indicator. Technical breakthrough could be an indicator. Have they found a vaccine? Have they found a cure? or even gradual social trends could be indicators. So you build two, three or four scenarios, not more than four, definitely not one. You might choose of the four, no, that the uh, most optimistic final play out. Let's look at the other three. What is your choice? Don't forget that decision scenarios do not fall neatly into good and bad futures or desirable and undesirable worlds. They are a mixed bag, like all possible real worlds. When towards the end of last year, most of you were planning for the new year, you've all had your uh, uh, strategy retreat, agreed of what's gonna happen, how you're going to operate in 2020, beautiful year. Nobody, no company, I know, 
factored in the issue of COVID-19. Even when there were ample warnings, and one of the social media, one of the stories on social media was Bill Gates' TED Talk in, 20, in 2015, in which he actually sounded a note of warning. So if a company has taken that, say, come on, let's build a scenario. So supposing this happens, how are we going to operate? How do we compete? So decision scenarios can be macro, when I say global, it's not worldwide, but macro scenarios, or they can actually focus on particular business aspects. You know, the oil and gas gas, we just focus, develop a scenario purely on a particular aspect of the business. That is looking at drilling, shell versus traditional oil, or even use for personal strategies. You can actually even develop your own scenario about your own, about your future, about your careers. It's possible. Let me also tell you that scenario planning is powerful. Scenario planning is very effective in helping us to do a few things. Focus better on the uncertainties that lie in the future. And to understand better what they might mean to us, what they might mean to our business, and how we should be prepared to tackle it. It's a way for us to rehearse our responses to those possible futures because we have developed possible plans, discovering strategic options of which we are not previously aware of. It could also help us to spot these futures early as they begin to unfold. But if we've not thought of them, we are not likely to spot them as their food. So for us, when we're looking at scenario planning, I want us to think of the, how we respond to the futures that are inherent in this unpredictability. We have not predicted them. We know that they are likely to happen. The first is we must become agile. Agility in this case has strategic flexibility in adapting to a new environment, in becoming more competitive to a new environment. Because at the time we are looking at it, it was uncertain to us. But when it becomes certain, are we in a position to act? Secondly, it enables us to have the ability to quickly reconfigure products and services, channels for reaching our customers, and the skill sets we need to play. You see, all of us have been going through a crash program on e-commerce. Everybody, as soon as it happened, lockdown, no movement, so the only way I can now reach my customers is through e-commerce. And most of us, never had it on our radar. We never planned for it. We never had the infrastructure. But our ability to adapt is critical. Some have adapted, some are still fighting with it. That is that agility. But the other is that it should enable us to have a vision of a radically new business model, if need be, that we can say what made us successful in 2019 is not like to make us successful in 2020. What do we need to do to be successful? Because if we don't, we'll be one of the companies that will go under. So finally, before we go to question and answer session, so I can give you opportunity to ask questions and we'll explore other issues you think I have not mentioned, is this say, this message from Peter Drucker, the greatest danger in terms of turbulence and in terms of disruption 
is not the disruption of turbulence itself, is to act with yesterday's logic. I mean that what made me successful yesterday. I'm not going to change a winning team. You know, that tell us don't change a winning team. No. Once there's turbulence, then there's disruption. You have to rethink. You might even have to change your business model. So let's take some questions and now have a good conversation. Uh, we'll ask if Rosa to help okay. us out with the question and answer session. Okay. The first question we have here, he says, how do we clearly distinguish scenario planning from forecasting? Scenario planning is not forecasting. Forecasting tend to look at trend analysis. In forecasting, you say, what are the trends? And sometimes we try to project. And I, used to, I, I normally tell my MBA students that the future is not necessarily an extrapolation of the past. And why do I tell them that? That if we believe on forecasting, we want to look at trend analysis and see what's going to happen in the future. That scenario planning is not forecast. We are not looking at what has happened in the past. We are trying to predict what is going to happen in the future based on certain trends, on certain factors that we see playing out in the marketplace. So if you look at, if it's actually forecasting, June last year, oil producers will be forecasting an increase in oil price. And that's what they use for their budgeting. But in reality today, what's the price of oil? In some countries, it's even negative. At the time, it was negative in America, it was negative in, in Canada. That's you are begging, you are paying people to take your oil. So there's a difference between forecasting and scenario planning. Please, please note scenario planning is not forecasting. Okay, thank you, sir. The next question is, how frequent should scenario planning be conducted in an organization? So, first and foremost, I want us to realize that it's not because there's a disruption that will embark on scenario planning. HSBC is a bank in the UK. There's no disruption decided to develop a scenario based on the fact that demography was changing. They could see trend in change demography. They could see change in technology. So let's build a scenario of what the banking world is going to be like in the next, to them, it actually talked of 50 years. So they were not building that scenario because there's a disruption. They are building because they want to understand their, the future of their business better. I say it is not something that is done every year, but once there's a disruption, it forces us to now talk of building scenarios. But scenarios plan is something that the company can embark on at the end of every strategic plan. So when you have your strategic plan, you have your uh, strategy retreat, you develop a strategic plan, it could be for three years, five years, at the end of every strategic plan, if there is no disruption, you can then actually build scenarios to enable you develop the next set of strategic plans. Okay, thank you, sir. The next question is, how is scenario planning different from risk and opportunity analysis or assessment, especially as it concerns issues external to the organization? So you find that when companies are doing risk analysis, or call it SWOT analysis, our strengths are weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and threats actually risk. And then the risk managers, in most people, particularly in the, in the financial services sector, engage in local enterprise risk. They're looking at risk as they see them, and sometimes as they are likely to manifest based on the knowledge they have or what the experts have told them. But Scenario is not risk analysis. Scenario plan is trying to create a trying to create a future based on different trends that are happening. Within that future, there are risk, there are opportunities. But there are four different, three, two different futures. And within each future, the risks are different. But when we tend to when we look at risk analysis, we are looking at one way of looking at that risk. We don't have other alternatives. So there's a difference between risk analysis and scenario planning. Thank you, sir. 
And the next question is this. At what phase in project management can one carry out scenario planning? And what role does it play in project management? So project management tends to agree on executing a project within a time frame, within a known set of environmental factors. And the project goes beyond the most of the things we do are projects. Even beauty counter is a project. Building a house is a project. Building a factory is a project. So we do project management on the basis of a time frame, a start and a finish. The only thing about that is that while we are building the projects, from time to time, we try to determine based on the factors that are prevailing, what are those things that are having adverse or positive impact on the project. And that's why contractors always come in with variations. When they tell you the cost of building this house is X million naira. In the process, because there's the variation of prices and rest of it, they come and tell you variation. You need to increase. When prices drop, they don't come and tell you the variation is lower. It's only when it goes up. So again, scenario planning is not used in terms of project management. Scenario planning is used in terms of understanding how to run my business, how to compete when things change. But I need to anticipate those changes before they happen. What else in project management, those changes, are, those changes happen, we try to say, how do we mitigate or how do we change the costs? So the difference is I'm actually trying to create, predict futures. I have not predicted one. I'm trying to predict two, three, four, and say, what will happen if any of these futures plays out? Okay, thank you, sir. The next question is, how practicable is scenario planning in Nigeria with weak or reliable data? You see, I have the, 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 four, the three different scenarios I we played out now, did not depend on data that is 100% accurate. The moment of absolute certainty will never arrive. You see, you are using, you are developing your scenarios and building them around trends, around factors. So it's not, I have not told you that the GDP we shrink by 4%, or the GDP we shrink, or we grow by 2%. People build models, do that. So please, when people build scenarios, we try to collect data, yes. Remember I said you, do, you can do your you do a data analysis, data collection, uh, talk to customers, talk to uh, experts. Whatever information you have can help you. Don't depend on the moment of absolute certainty. Yes, we don't have reliable data, but we can guesstimate. We are running business successfully in Nigeria, even without data. But many people are trying to. If I, if you, if you, if you, if you run a lubricant plant today, and your biggest users, buyers, not the car owners, are mechanics. I'm sure you will find ways. You don't know the number of mechanics in Lagos. But I can assure you, if we spend 30 minutes, we can come up with what we think is a reasonable number of mechanics in Lagos to enable you to do your planning. Just 30 minutes, and we'll get it. And it might be about 70% correct or accurate. The moment of absolute certainty will never arrive. So don't depend on absolute data before you can do your scenario planning. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, the next question is, what happens when a situation arises outside your planned four quadrants? You say, you say, I say monitor trends as they move on. So we have, that means in deciding on the two most and most important and most uncertain. If as the trends move, 
you find that other factors have become most important and most uncertain, you have to reconstruct your, scenario, your scenarios. I've, I gave you three different ones where somebody used just the extent of the spread and the, and, and the length of time. Another used oil, price of oil and length of time of uh, COVID. Another used social stability and length of time. So once you track, remember I say you keep tracking those trends, those factors to see which one play out. If all of a sudden another factor becomes so critical and important, you can then rebuild your scenarios. Professor Yamut, can you unmute, please? Sorry. The how can scenario planning help a state government to look at the future and plan better in terms of investments to increase revenue in this turbulent time? It's, at this time, scenario planning is absolutely critical for states. There are many factors that are, we can actually identify and start state ranking them. Revenue is going to drop. The share, the fact account is, is getting leaner and leaner. That revenue from, from government because oil price is dropping. So government revenue is going to drop. State revenues will drop. Many companies in the United States will probably go under. So payee, they'll have less number of staff. Payee is going to drop. Social unrest is going to happen because unemployment is going to be high. Even state government will be able to pay salaries. So if we start looking at various factors, it's important to say what kind of futures. Can we play three, four futures and at each stage we face? Because once we do that, the first, quest, the first thing that we now do is what must we do if this scenario plays out? What must we do? Because these trends are already, we are seeing them. When will they change? We don't know. That's why it's uncertain. So I think this is the time for states to actually engage that. And we at the Lagos Business School are putting together some teams to engage state governments and see how we can help them figure out and make sense out of what's happening and how it will impact their future. So that is something we want to do. We are not doing it for a, for a fee. We are doing it as part of our contribution to ensuring that the states survive. Thank you, sir. The next question is, can scenario planning become too late? Is it ever too late? Nothing is ever too late. Don't forget we're talking of future. Scenario is talking of future. Nothing is ever too late. Now, let me take for example, many of us have been taken on a west right now. So, the guys who are running hospitality businesses have taken our ways. But it's not too late for them to not predict what's their, their future. So know how long will this say if it lasts long, what will happen? If it doesn't last long, what will happen? so they can build their own future in order to for them to decide how they are going to compete in their businesses, how they're going to run, how they're going to change their business model. It might not be that those hotel rooms are now, now they're going to get guests. You can start thinking of other things to do with that asset you have. So it's never too late. There are many retail companies that have been taken on our ways. They have to think of how they are going to compete in the future. So please, it's never too late. You can start now because where you are now is certain. But where you'll be tomorrow or in, in a month's time is not certain. Okay. Thank you, sir. A question, another question. An executive, as a business executive, if all the possible scenarios built over time fail, what should the best approach from that point onwards be? To employ another question. Kind of if all scenarios fail. Yes. That he's a business executive, and if all possible scenarios built over time fail, what should be the next best approach? from that point? Should he employ a professional or should he try again? 
Scenarios don't fail. You are trying to create, you are just imagining what those features are. You have four features. And if you are tracking fact and trends, they will lead you to one. What fails is our inability to respond to environmental changes. So our businesses could be challenged if we don't respond. But the whole idea of that scenario plan is to enable us to prepare our businesses. See, how do we respond if this future is going to play out? But as we track those trends, forces, and driving forces in, in the environment, we could then be in a position to know which of the scenarios are going to play out. Scenarios don't fail, businesses fail. Thank you. So please, what are the clear indicators that advise managers to commence a timely reactionary scenario planning? The indicators are when my business is in a business is, is not only when my business is, is, in, is in trouble, it's also when the environment changes. Now, let me, let's take an industry that is benefiting from this now. E-commerce. Should they fold their hands and say, oh my God, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are making money now, we are the king. This is the time for them to also plan these trends, the things that are happening now that's making us, will it continue? If it changes, what happens? If more people come into this space, what happens? If those who are now patronizing us, or those who we have taken businesses from, reconfigure their own business model. They could take business from us. So it is not only for those who are in trouble. Even businesses that are doing well now can actually put together their own scenario, do scenario planning. It is applicable to everybody. I give an example of HSBC. HSBC is one of the biggest banks, it's one of the biggest bank in the UK. But you know, they did not fold their arms saying that we are okay. They are looking at 50 years ahead. We need to remain relevant. Another example, today in the banking world, in the Nigerian banking sector, how many banks are actually digital? Those who are, are thinking that they have competitive advantage. But how fast can those who don't have catch up with them and even overtake them? So nobody can be complacent, happy, comfortable that is on top of the world. So it is applicable to any business, whether you're doing well or not doing well. The key thing is, what is my future? How can I compete in the future and remain competitive offer superior value proposition, and satisfy all my stakeholders. Thank you, sir. The next question is, what is the role of competitive intelligence in scenario planning? Competitive intelligence tends to be knowing what my competitors are doing. Knowing what they are doing is good, but there are two other factors must bear in mind. You don't have the same culture so that you know what their uh, strategy is does not mean that you can beat them their culture is different from yours you don't know what their own strategic objectives are they might be different from yours you don't know what their own execution capabilities are they might be different from yours that you know what they do does not give you an edge it could even make you panic that you think they are better than you yes Competitive intelligence is to enable what are my competitors doing. It enables me to understand how am I competing in the marketplace. But most importantly, what is more, uh, what's most important when we come to competitiveness is am I offering superior value proposition to my customers? The focus will be more on customers than on competitors. Thank you, sir. 
Another question is, is scenario planning used to arrive at strategy or applied after your strategy has been decided? If the so latter... It is, it is used to help me understand the environment I'm going to play in, the context of my strategy. So I have to understand my strategy before I develop. I understand my environment before I develop my strategy. It's not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So what if, if the picture... If this world we've created is such that there's going to be high social unrest, consumers will be challenged, import restriction, foreign exchange scarcity, inability to get money from banks, it's a future. Now, how do I compete in this kind of environment if I want to succeed? That's where the strategy comes in. So scenario planning first tells me what my environment is and the context of my strategy before I develop my strategy. Okay. Thank you, sir. A question from someone else said, how does the lockdown impact on importation of goods and subsequently the balance of payments? Well, we are told that even though we have lockdown, that cargo ships, and cargo planes still come in. But they have to go through a quarantine process. We have ships vetted, waiting to be cleared. I have a friend who told me that his, the, the, the ship that brought his pharmaceutical products have been the wharf for the past two months. They've been cleared. So the lockdown is slowing down the rate of getting those things that we need. And that's why we say the supply chain is challenged. So it's left for the guys who are running MPA to see how they can. Because at some stage, we're going to have acute scarcity of our school products and other products that are coming in from outside Nigeria. If we don't manage that interface of for, uh, clearing people and clearing the goods fast. Thank you, sir. Another question says, based on your last explanation, at what point does senior should scenario planning be built? Immediately the opportunity is spotted or before your SWOT analysis? No, scenario planning enables you to spot opportunities. Not, it's not like you spot opportunity build scenario. Right now, I'm telling all companies that are involved, this is the time to sit down and build scenarios for your organization. Now, now, big now. You see, of those two, three, four scenarios, how am I going to compete? What strategies must I put in place to compete in any of them? And I'll start, what are the indicators I should track to know which scenario is likely to play out? And those within this scenario, based on what we're doing now, we could see opportunities. It could be opportunity for new products, new service. It could be opportunity for new ways of doing business. But it's from the scenario that we build that we could identify opportunities. Not opportunity that will lead us to developing scenarios. Okay, thank you, sir. There are quite a number of questions along that line, so I think what Sir Chris has said should have answered your question concerning which comes. The questions from. we can take now, we can we can actually respond to them by email. Yes. We can list them and ask them, and then as long as we have their contact, we can respond. Yes. So um, we will soon round up the webinar in about two minutes. So we still have about fifty questions. Um, but some are repetitive, which Sir Chris has already answered. But those that are not, we will definitely get back to you and give you more information in terms of your needs concerning scenario planning. Because some a lot of questions here point to the fact that it is a skill a lot of people would like to acquire. And um, we have an online program that would definitely help in line with this request. So um, send your requests to us by email. I've put our email on the chat section. Send us an email if you are interested in the online program called Scenario Planning Skills. That will run from the 27th of May this year. We will also send everyone who has participated the video of this recording. So you will get a video and a list of other free webinars that Lagos Business School is offering. So with this, we'd like to come to the end of the webinar. Thank you so much, Sir Chris, for your time and thank you for sharing your knowledge. 
Sir Chris will be the lead facilitator in the webinar, in the online program. That's a scenario planning skills web, um, online program. He's a lead facilitator. So you will definitely hear more from him if you register for that program. So from me, is thank you so much, Sir Chris. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for all those who participated. I hope you've learned one or two things that could trigger off the, the interest for scenario planning and how you can ginger your own management team to put together a scenario for your companies in planning for the future of your, of your organizations. Thank you very much. Please stay safe. Remember to wash your hands often. Wear face masks when you're going out and don't take anything for granted. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.